So right now you're chilling with Teff. Naturally, I had to pay it forward. So rather than interview four random Beijing creatives, I figured I'd talk to four creatives about a new, exciting business opportunity for creatives and others around the world. We're going to talk about NFTs. What really is an NFT? Is it the digital goal that Beijing creatives have been waiting for? Today, we talk to Beijing R&B legend, Chantal, as she tells us about selling a couple NFTs alongside some of her recent music. So today, we're chilling with Chantal. Beijing singer, songwriter, serial entrepreneur, crypto investor, NFT collector. <laughs> Genius. <laughs> the first time I heard about NFTs was basically through, I had started like dabbling in Forex trading. And then that kind of led me into the crypto trading world. And then through being a part of the crypto community, that was where I first started hearing about NFTs. An NFT. I think we all know by now, it stands for non-fungible token. Um, but what an NFT is, I mean, it means a lot of things for me personally, but it literally is just a smart contract that verifies ownership. So naturally, it can be anything. Like deeds, a deed can be an NFT, you know? People kind of think it's just a JPEG. Like, I don't understand why people are paying so much money for a JPEG. But what they don't realize is that these JPEGs are coming with utility. And so you can buy a JPEG and suddenly be a member of a DAO who gets a royalty on all sales every month or something like that, you know? They offer all kinds of different things just for being in this. It's like being a member of a club and you get all the benefits of the club. Um, so at this stage, for me though, NFTs really represent a way for me to cut out the middleman, go directly to my fan base and actually provide them with something that can potentially also make them money. So it's like we're in it together. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not just taking your money and now you uh, have a song or you came to the concert and then that's it. You know what I mean? Like you can actually make money over time by investing in, in my NFTs or any artist's NFTs. Um, so they just, yeah, for me, the strongest point I would say is cutting out the middleman. They're kind of like a guarantee of like passive income and a nice way that you could build some generational wealth. That's what, that's what it really means for me at this point. So how I got into NFTs was at the top of the pandemic, my business partner, Adesi, and I were really brainstorming, trying to figure out like, how do we survive as artists through this thing, you know? Uh, does it make sense releasing new music? We can't tour to promote it, can't do any of this stuff. So she was the one who came to me with the idea, like, why don't you put out an NFT? Um, and I was just like, never even thought about that. <laughs> but then I, you know, in my mind, I was thinking, yeah, but a music NFT though, like, isn't that kind of like an art thing? <laughs> um, and then, of course, you know, a daisy can just be like, so be different. <laughs> like, why you don't just do it first? Um, but then doing my research, I discovered that there, there were some artists that, popular artists that, you know, got into NFTs. And Kings of Leon had actually released their next album as an NFT. So then I knew, like, okay, this is a thing. So it's not going to be that weird to like music fans if I do this. Um, so she connected me with her friend Nico, who actually works with a company that, um, that basically this company is a marketplace that hosts NFTs. Um, so we ended up, fast forward, we ended up te teaming up with them. Uh, Daisy and I came, uh, conceptualized the entire project. Um, 
and we sort of package it all together. Um, we found an amazing artist in Texas. His name is Brandon, and he actually did like the cover art for the project because we realized that in the NFT space, still the, the visual element is still a big part of it. Um, you know, because at the end of the day, you still want it to be represented by something. Like you're gonna want to look at it in your wallet. There's gonna be a point in time where there's gonna be like social media platforms that are just for like showcasing your NFTs and things like that. So we really put a lot of thought into the visual aspect of it, the artwork, so to speak, for the single. Um, and that was pretty much how it all came about, you know, just brainstorming, trying to not get swallowed up by the pandemic. And we just wanted to do something cool that would, yeah, like I said, cut out the middleman, um, direct to consumer. Just, this is like me, just me and my fans. It's just us and, you know, doing this project together and because of the fact that the pandemic was affecting so many people financially, this was the perfect way to release new music for them because like instead of you just giving me your money and now you have a song that you can listen to or you can stream it, um, I've now provided you with a, with a means by which you, you can actually make money as well along with me uh, with passive income. You know, so that was basically how I structured my NFT. I wanted to be able to, to like financially empower the people who support me, not just everything going one way, you know? So that's why I thought it was such a good idea. How I ended up packaging my NFT, I really wanted to give a lot of utility, so Again, I didn't want you to just get a track or just a JPEG. Um, so I thought to myself, well, since you can literally do anything with an NFT, why don't I give my, my supporters as much value as I possibly can? So Dan, I set it up so that the top bidder would receive all kinds of amazing things. So you would get um, a cameo in the music video for the for the songhouse party. You would get custom artwork, which then incorporates you into the artwork with me, a Daisy, and the producer Dunny. You are also getting custom merch, um, and it's exclusive. Like we only made the the amount of merch is the number of NFTs, so that's the, the so it's very limited. Um, then you also get a vinyl um, and we made sure, cause we trying to do everything as green as possible. So we found a company that actually makes vinyls out of re recycled plastic. So we thought that was cool. Um, and then, then another cool um, aspect that we added was if you, if you end up being, you know, investing in this NFT, you're essentially also contributing to um, a charity. Um, so, you know, that would be going to like Day's, uh, Day's charity for House of Day, which basically is to benefit mental health um, and things like that. So, yeah, merch, you get your vinyl, you get also a dub plate because we wanted to also add elements that were very Caribbean. You know, we were like, how can we do a music NFT in a way that no one has ever done this? But kind of pay homage to our, the, you know, our music culture here. And we were like, what do we do in music that no one else in the world really does? Was it was cultural to us? And we were like, the plates. <laughs> so then, so then the top bidders actually get also a version of the song, a personal version of the song that has their name in it. The same way we do a dub plate and you put the DJ's name in it or whatever the case may be. Um, so yeah, a lot of cool little utilities. And we're also gonna add when the world opens back up, at, you know, backstage access to concerts, VIPs, meet and greets, um, a lot of fun stuff, you know? So it's, it's bang for your buck. You know what I mean? It's not, you're not, you're not just getting a song. You're getting a whole lot in the package. Of course, now, when it comes to NFTs, at this point, there's so many different platforms. And I had to put a lot of thought into what platform 
I would go with, you know. Um, so I didn't want to immediately go to OpenSea because OpenSea at that time wasn't really, first of all, is OpenSea. So that means so many projects. I mean, like, I mean, like hundreds of thousands of projects are currently being hosted on OpenSea. Um, but it also wasn't necessarily like a place that was known as a go to for like music projects or anything. Um, so we found out about a company called Owens NFT and I actually chose them because they sort of like already play around in the world that is connected to the Caribbean in that, you know, there's NBA Top Shop, Top Shot and all these things. They host collections of trading cards, like NFT trading cards for cricket. So I was like, okay, wait a minute. If this platform is doing cricket stuff, that means that Caribbean eyes might potentially also be over here. And let's be honest, even though I'm an international artist, you know, um, at the end of the day, I'm still Caribbean. I'm still from Barbados. And I thought that was really cool. I felt like that might get on some, you know, it could be a cool way to, to, to gradually bring people in my culture and my community into the NFT space. Um, if they're already looking over there for cricket trading cards, you might then discover <laughs> my project there or something. Um, and then they were also giving us a really good deal. So we went ahead and did the first round with Owens. And now out of 11, they are five left and the, the remaining five are now being hosted on OpenSea. But that's because the first round was like super successful. People know about it now. Now music NFTs are a thing. And now we can feel comfortable going into a more open space <laughs> like OpenSea. So yeah, we're gonna do a second round um, of auctions. And yeah, that's gonna be on the OpenSea platform. With physical socializing restricted by COVID related protocols, for possibly the next few years, local creatives are stuck in a rut with limited to no real way to sustain a career via traditional models. Even pre-pandemic viable careers seemed bleak for many. Can digital assets, particularly NFTs, create a new path to monetizing various creative efforts across different genres of expression? Not only lucratively, but at the highest price points offered by your biggest fans across the globe? Crypto, getting involved in anything crypto in the Caribbean does have its challenges and setbacks simply because I'm just going to put it very plain. I believe that we are extremely behind um, and we do have a lot of movers and shakers and pioneers like people like Gabriel Abed that, that are trying to push things forward, but he, he gets so much resistance. Um, and I think it's because people don't understand the world of crypto. Like people really still think it's this dark underworld of criminals. Yeah, I really feel like crypto not being embraced in the Caribbean and uh, very specifically Barbados is, is a major detriment to our artists. Um, I mean, not even the visual art, not even just visual artists, but also, you know, like entertainers, performers, musicians, anyone who, who creates anything artistic. Um, because there's a whole world out there and we don't have tourists here right now, not in the numbers that we're accustomed to. And that is how a lot of the artists make money from the tourists that come and they want to like invest in Beijing art or collect Beijing art. Um, but the thing is that there's so many people internationally who really want to collect this type of art. And it is actually so easy to get your art in front of their eyes. Um, but in order to be even able to play the game, you need access to crypto. You need to be able to bank your crypto and things like that. And we do not have those options in Barbados. So now in order for you to get to say acquire your first set of crypto because what it is is that it takes crypto to even mint an nft minting meaning to create it so to speak and actually have it live on the blockchain and exist there it's going to cost you money you cannot pay in fiat cash you can't swipe your credit card 
you have to use crypto. And if we cannot access crypto, we cannot even start. Um, so if you can't just use your credit card, if you're in the US, if you're in other countries, you can just go on a marketplace like Binance or Coinbase, use, or even, even in MetaMask, and you can use your, your credit card and just buy the amount of crypto that you, that you need. Um, we can't do that here. So we have to go all kind of, through all kind of back doors. And it also makes it even more expensive because people are going to charge fees and things like that um, sometimes. So, so typically what a lot of us will do to acquire our first crypto to start, to get started, um, you got to know someone in a country that has access to crypto and then do what we call OTC, over the counter or peer to peer transactions, which means, okay, I will say, yo, do you have PayPal? <laughs> Can I send you like 300 USD and you send me equi the equivalent in ETH or whatever, whatever crypto I'm trying to, trying to get my hands on. Um, and so you kind of have to do it like that. You need a friend that has crypto and the, 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 the world of crypto is still pretty small. Like it's still not really mainstream yet. So most people don't just have friends that just have crypto, you know what I mean? So then you, and then sometimes your friends that have crypto are tapped out because all their other friends are like, yo, can you send me ETH? And they're like, but I need my ETH <laughs> to do, you know, to maybe purchase new NFTs, make trades, um, to mint my new collection that I'm trying to, you know, put out there. So it, it you kind of start to hit like, you know, all these roadblocks and dead ends. Um, and that could be really frustrating because I personally know a handful of Bajan artists that have become very popular in the space. I mean, hugely, immensely popular and people are like dying for their art. And luckily, if I'm not if I'm not mistaken, the majority of those artists that are able to do that are like myself, meaning that we have U.S. bank accounts. <laughs> so if you have a U.S. bank account, then you're able to do this. You can just use your credit card. You know, you can set up your Coinbase account or your Binance account through your U.S. bank account, and you can just buy crypto very easily. Um, but a lot of people don't have that, you know, a lot of people don't have that. I guess you could call it a luxury <laughs> of, of having foreign bank accounts. You know, if you have a Canadian bank account, you can do it as well. Um, and a, a bunch of other countries. But yeah, so that makes it really difficult to even get started. Um, but if you're really lucky <laughs> and you're like Halik Mall or you're like Zoe, you can and you get, you know, you're, you get lucky to get that first start and then you become popular in the art world. Um, then you, you'll start making money in crypto because it just really takes someone purchasing your piece. Now you have more crypto. Now you can take some of that, reinvest it into your next collection and kind of keep the ball rolling. So uh, there are two people that, that I know personally that have done a really good job of that. But yeah, I mean, it really sucks that you can't just go to the bank and... You, like you can't use your card, you know, the bank will block it. Um, and that, that kind of is like leaving us behind in the dark ages <laughs> because we cannot deny that crypto is taking over. Um, and so many countries have started adopting cryptocurrencies as their local currency, or they have a, a matching stable coin to their currency. So, you know, you'll see some countries put out a, a coin that has the exact same value as whatever their dollar, you know, or their, their national currency has, just so that people come, you know, do what you need to do in the crypto space. Um, and there's so many other applications <laughs> of crypto and blockchain technology that, that, that basically leaves us totally, like, in, like, honestly, it's like we're in the dark ages. Like, there's so many things. To, we're focusing on NFTs today, but blockchain technology is good for so many awesome things and we can't do any of it because you know we're blocked and it and there's no valuable valid reason at this time why i i know i think i know the reasons why 
but I'm not going to get into that. All I'm going to say is that you can't lie on the blockchain. You can't steal, you can't hide money, you can't do any of that stuff. You can't do no corruption because blockchain verifies everything. And sometimes, you know, when you can't do things, you're not going to embrace <laughs> a certain technology. And I would hate to know that those are the reasons why. Um, but we could break it down so much further. Um, but, you know, I'm not going to do that now. But I think it's time that we really do start embracing crypto and make it possible for we should be able to just go to a Bitcoin ATM and get you know, get some crypto. It actually also means that you're blocking our public for being a part of things that are happening globally. So there might be someone who's not an, a, a, a graphic artist or a visual artist, like someone who doesn't want to create a project, but is sitting there watching the news and seeing all of this cool stuff happening in the NFT verse, in the metaverse, they might want to be able to play a certain game we have a, a large gaming community in Barbados. They can't participate. They can't play any of these games because we, you know what I'm saying? Like they can't access crypto. Like you need crypto to even get in the game, to even purchase an avatar, to even all these things. Um, so it's a lot and I don't like it. <laughs> I really hope that things change soon um, because it isn't some dark, scary beast that's out to like destroy all of humanity it's actually as black people too we should be embracing it because it's giving us you know, a lot of financial freedom that we did not have before um and i really think that these things are so important you know i'm not even going to get into like how much i dislike li dislike banks and the things that they do and honestly if we if we free up crypto a lot of people you would suddenly see people be very successful in life, um, which to me helps the bottom end for our economy. Like, you don't want a bunch of struggling. That that that's a recipe for crime. People like hungry, starving. They, they they can't find a way to make money. Make it possible for people to make money, dog. Stop being selfish, and and you will see crime rates reduce. You will see the happy the overall happiness in your country improve because people are not killing themselves, making not, you know, you're not making enough money to survive. You could go and have your job, but still go and, and invest in some crypto or something. You know what I mean? Empower yourself financially. People got children that go to school, they go to eat. These things are not cool, in my opinion. And I feel like it's a way that, that we can really liberate people financially. And as black people, for us to not be embracing it actually makes zero sense to me personally, you know? Um, so I would like to see things change fast because we already behind. Local artists, get smart, find you a friend <laughs> that got some crypto and just do some over the counter exchange with them. Uh, for the time being until, until they make it possible for us to just, you know, use our, your, use our bank accounts, our cards to acquire it, that's an easy way. Get a friend, Pay them cash and they'll send you. But please only use people that you trust because there's no governance and no law to protect you in the world of crypto. So if you go and get scammed and someone is like, sure, send me 500 US, I'll send you your ETH. They could just take your money and never send you anything and you literally can't go to the police. So you have a way around it, but please, you know, be very careful. The interesting thing that happened as a result of me taking a Daisy's advice and and I'm going ahead and launching my my first NFT. Um, there's so many cool things that that happened as like like a domino effect. Um, but of course, it was a way for me to get my hands on like some of my first you know crypto, and then it also put me in a position where I didn't realize this was happening, but I, I, I made history. <laughs> I was told. <laughs> um, so apparently I'm the first black female mainstream recording artist to launch an NFT project. And that 
in and of itself gained a lot of attention, which I wasn't expecting. But I ended up uh, being interviewed by USA Today and Coindesk and all these like major platforms, Yahoo Finance. And it was kind of interesting because normally I would be doing interviews with like Rolling Stone, Billboard, MTV. Um, but you know, here I am talking on all these like finance platforms now, and that was pretty interesting. I mean, it, I didn't do it on purpose. I didn't know that this was happening, but to kind of be the first in any space is really cool. And and definitely in the NFT space, that in and of itself has value. Um, in the art world, really and truly, like investing in anything that was the first of anything usually has a lot of value. And I think that in part added to a lot of the, su the success of the project overall. Um, but then a lot of cool things started to happen. I, I ended up getting connected. I don't know how many of you guys know like Gary Vaynerchuk, but you know we ended up getting connected with like Gary and and his company Vayner, um, and it it it's just such a cool thing to. Sometimes these people are so they feel so like unreachable, you know, like so far worlds away from us. But now here we are, like talking to Vayner, Vayner Media. Um, and then that ended up, that led to me now being a part of the team over at NFT. So I don't know how many people know what at NFT is, but it's pretty much like the premier NFT social media platform. So like all the big projects that want to advertise uh, when they're dropping a new project, they go to at NFT. And this, and this platform is owned by Mark Cuban. So we have people now and just list, like I probably would have zero access to these people if it wasn't if I was not, you know what I'm saying, like engaging blockchain technology and I was not in this world. I these are people that are so far removed. I would never have any access to them. But now by being in a part being a part of this community, now you're literally next to these giant movers and shakers of the world. And that has actually led to me being literally getting paid to be a consultant on so many new like really big nft projects are being launched um and so i'm just like working behind the scenes a lot um on many different projects and you know like working with different servers on discord um it's like really taking me to a place where if you told me like ask me 10 years ago what i would be doing i would never tell you i'm in finance i'm in trading i would never tell you that i'm gonna be in crypto or anything like that so and it's kind of funny because i i say this to people close to me all the time since i was a kid i just want people to pay me for my brain you know what i mean like just pay me to tell you what to do <laughs> because i feel like i'm really good at strategizing things and so it's now reached a place where that is actually f happening and literally through crypto and blockchain i'm i'm like realizing one of my biggest dreams you know um and this is only the beginning like there's so much farther to go so much m more for it to grow um but yeah it's really put me in a very a very prominent pos position in the space i would say and it feels pretty good to just be like this little girl from barbados you know, <laughs> now I just out here rolling <laughs> like Mark Q and a Cary V. <laughs> That's so dope. You know what I mean? And yeah, so I really owe it to a Daisy man. Like, again, she's like a like, like she's like gas in a tank. You know what I mean? She comes up with the coolest ideas. And she also is one of those people like that you should pay to, t to tell you what to do. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because I probably wouldn't have done this if she didn't push me to do it. You know what I mean? So I'm really grateful for that. Um, and it's just, it just, my brain goes like every day in this space. You know what I mean? It's the fastest evolving thing I've ever seen. Like in terms of technology, like this week, it's one thing. And then by like next week, it's evolved already. I've never seen any tech evolve this quickly. So, I, folks, it's time to embrace it. Or, or we, we, we can be all the way behind, like for real. Like, stop. It's time to stop looking at blockchain as like criminalville. It's so, it's not. It really, I'm not a criminal. I have no criminal record. I don't steal, I don't rob, I don't kill, I don't do anything criminal. And here I am in this space. <laughs> so, pick sense on that, you know? Empower yourselves, people. 
get with the blockchain. The way how Zoe fuses like architecture and graphic design and animation all into one to me is so phenomenal and I I've seen a few other artists out there that that are kind of like the ethos of their artwork is like Caribbean architecture but I haven't really seen anyone do it like how Zoe is doing it like I feel like Zoe could build a whole metaverse where like men could just have avatars and go and lie at a rum shop <laughs> in Zoe's metaverse or something. You know what I mean? Like it's so cool. I love the I love what she's doing. And then of course Halik Mall. I can't even he blows my mind. Like people people of Barbados don't even know how major he is in this community. Like he's an actual legend and Halik hosts spaces on Twitter. And if you see the people that pull up in his spaces, they're not regular people. They are like some like major collectors, major investors. Like these are the people that he's on their radar. You know what I mean? And for a really good reason, this guy is so smart. The way how he makes investments, the way how he moves. Um, and, and Halik's art and music speaks for itself, you know? And I feel like he's really coming coming into his own. He He's very, when you talk to him, he's very, I would say, Halik is very intentional with every move that he makes. And he is a genius. And I think it is very worth it to pay attention to him and Holder's Land. <laughs> and just don't believe me, just watch. <laughs>